This is a story of two Miskites, my cousin Sarah and me. Being Miskites, we both became withdrawn from life. I've spent much of my 63 years all alone, and Sarah was even more alone than me. But, as it turns out, Sarah had a secret. She was, and I never would have guessed this, an accomplished artist. I only found out about it because, in her suicide note, she left her paintings to me. After they found her body, I was the only family member who cared enough to go to her apartment, and I stood there amazed and astonished by the paintings. They were so unlike the person who painted them. Here were scenes that were colorful, vibrant, and extroverted. And they were, for the most part, about life in places far from the Queens, New York neighborhood that Sarah rarely left. As I studied the faces that looked out from the paintings, I realized that many of them were based on people in our family, and in the most unexpected and ironic ways. These passionate young lovers, for example, that's my uncle Simon and his adulterous wife Rita. Simon, who was very mild-mannered, ended up murdering Rita and one of her lovers. I think he died in prison a few years ago. After a while, I recognized the face on this pig farmer. He's clearly my uncle Reuben, who was a kosher butcher. This is my cousin Nathan, who was a moil and an alcoholic. One day he performed a circumcision while under the influence. Witnesses said he used his scalpel like an axe. My cousin Shlomo, who you see here, was a mental case, one of those people who never left the house. But Sarah painted him in a swanky nightclub surrounded by celebrities and high society. These two women walking side by side, that's my mom and her sister, Sarah's mom. These women were bitter rivals and would never be seen next to each other in real life. The only thing they had in common was this woman who cleaned both their apartments. In addition to cleaning up the apartment, she also cleaned out my mother's wallet and jewelry box. Sarah painted this petty thief as a Bible toter. I recognize this pretzel seller as my uncle Morris, the big shot investor. He was the only truly wealthy person in the family, and he loved to look down his nose at the rest of us. This was Sarah's revenge, making him a pushcart peddler. And this was his son, my cousin Murray, who spent his entire short life looking for God. He eventually joined Jews for Jesus and was killed by a suicide bomber on a trip to the Holy Land. My beloved Uncle Leo couldn't walk, a victim of childhood polio. He was also passionate about baseball, so Sarah honored this gentle and lovely man by painting him as an award-winning baseball player. Of all the disguised family portraits in Sarah's paintings, this one is the most ironic. This beauty queen, that's me. I think Sarah made me look a little more presentable here than I look in real life. A Miskite in a beauty pageant, another example of Sarah's strange sense of humor. But there's really nothing funny about being a Miskite. Sarah and I both understood the desperateness of our shared condition, two lonely virgin spinsters. I suppose that's why Sarah and I briefly became intimate with each other. This happened three decades ago when we were both in our thirties. I found these sketches that Sarah drew to commemorate our encounters. They were in a sealed envelope taped to the back of her big, heavy dresser. 
but what Sarah drew in these scenes was a complete fantasy. In real life, we met only a few times in my dingy apartment, and our intimate moments were klutzy, repressed, hesitant, and quietly desperate. I can only guess that it made Sarah feel good to draw us as passionate, worldly lovers. But this is really a joke. A sweet joke. A sad joke. Our affair, if you can even call it that, ended as quickly and silently as it began. And for the next 30 years, we only saw each other at rare family get-togethers too embarrassed to speak to each other. And now that she's gone, her paintings are mine. But why did she leave them to me? What was she thinking? That they'd comfort me? That they'd brighten my life and make me happy? They don't. But that's not why I've decided to sell them. I'm undergoing chemotherapy right now, and it's expensive, and I need the money. I don't know how much I can get for these paintings, but since they have no sentimental value to me, I might as well get some cash. As for these drawings, they're not for sale. I suppose these fantasy scenes from Sarah's imagination are the closest I've ever come to being loved. If the chemo doesn't work and you come to clean out my apartment, You'll find these drawings in a sealed envelope taped to the back of my dresser. Don't bother opening it. Just throw it out with the rest of my stuff.